uh, Army. Joined in uh, August of 1958 after I finished high school. Uh, at that time, the draft was in, and I come from a huge family, 19 kids. My dad owned one of these little country stores that sells everything, but now I knew out of 19 kids, there was no chance that I was going to end up inheriting that store, and I had no plans for college, so I thought, well, why not go ahead and, and get in the military and get that over with before I get a job, get settled down, earn a living, and then I get called in. So that's why I went ahead and joined, just to get it out of the way. And uh, at that time, enlistment was a four-year. If you got drafted, you, it would be two, but if you enlisted, you pulled four years. And so I went ahead and joined for four years, and I had good scores on my aptitude tests, so they uh, told me that I was qualified to become a medic, and that's the way I got into the medical field. And that was at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. So uh, That was my first taste of anything except the hills of West Virginia and Kentucky. I come originally from the Hatfield-McCoy part of the country. Uh, after I finished basic training, I was going down to Fort Sam Houston, Texas, but they let me go home for Christmas, and while I was there, I told my girlfriend, I said, Brenda, honey, I am so lonely, I'm about to die. Please marry me and go back with me. So she did. She married me, and we went back to Fort Sam Houston, and I did my basic medical training uh, as a corpsman, and I also got on the post-boxing team. Uh, I didn't have enough rank. To, for the Army to pay my wife's way over, so I had to borrow money from, oh, I can't remember what, it, what, what the organization was, but I borrowed enough money to get her to Germany, and uh, uh, we had a child while we were over there, and we lost that baby to SIDS, and uh, so the Army packed us up, sent us back to the States, to Fort Sam, uh, uh, Fort Monroe, Virginia. And by that time, the Cuban Missile Crisis took place. And President Kennedy extended all of us for uh, six months. You couldn't get out even if you wanted to. So during that six months, I decided that, well, Brenda and I decided that we liked the Army, we liked the people in the Army, and we'd, we'd, we'd just stay. So after, after I came back from, uh, I'm sorry, after I finished there, I was transferred to San Francisco and went to a medical school which is the equivalent of an LPN in civilian life. That, Ninety-one C specialist, and after that, I was assigned to uh, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And while I was there, I noticed that all of the promotions seemed to be going to the troops in the 101st Airborne. So I went to jump school. If that's where the promotions were, that's where I was going. So I went to jump school and came back to uh, Fort Campbell, but then it wasn't very long after that till I was transferred to Germany again. Enjoyed Germany, stayed there uh, and, and until my time was up there, and then I went to Fort Campbell, I mean Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and joined the 82nd Airborne. Then one evening, in 1968, January, the phone rang while I was eating supper. The 
on-duty guy. Said, okay, Sergeant Williams, get in here, bag and baggage, we've got an alert. I turned around and told my wife, Brenda, I said, honey, another one of those stupid alerts. I'll see you in the morning. I went in, they locked the doors, and in four days we were in Vietnam. So, for a year. So, while I was gone, she stayed home and took care of the kids. Uh, after our in-country orientation, uh, we traveled north of the old Route 1, but it had been torn to pieces during Tet. So the only thing we had for bridges are those that the engineers lay down, and they'll different mats and, and they go, that go across the river. And uh, so we, we went to uh, just south of Way, H-U-E, Way, that was the old ancient Vietnamese capital. And just south of that, the 101st was, had already set up a base camp, so the 82nd set up our base camp just next to them. They actually joined together. But as soon as it was set up, I was put on a helicopter and sent due west. There was a huge valley with a river running down the middle of it. And we were trying to cut off supplies coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And it goes down this valley to Way because we had a lot of troops over there and they would, were hitting that area pretty hard. So our job was to go in and break that up. I, we sat down on a, on a small hill, it was like the, uh, the one kind of camels that had the double hump. That's what it was like. One side was where we had the artillery, the other side was the headquarters and the medics and so forth. And uh, I stayed there for about eight months in the jungle down in a hole in the ground with the metal and sandbags over top of us. So it, it was me, an MD, and all the rats in the world I think were in there because the river went right by us. So it was a very comfortable home for them. And of course, you can imagine, a bunch of young GIs, they eat half a sandwich, they throw the rest of it on the ground, and any time you feed those rats, you're going to have plenty of them. So I stayed there for eight months, and then I came back to the base camp and worked uh, in what, what most people would know now as a MASH hospital because of the TV show MASH. And that's where I spent the last four months. And after that, came back to the States to Fort Bragg. And at that time, we started hearing rumors that there was a new medical school starting at Fort Sam Houston. And if you could qualify for this school and make it through it, you would get a warrant officer promotion. So I applied for it, got it, went to Fort Sam same Houston, and completed the, the uh, PA school. At the end of the school, uh, there were a, a lot of us that wanted to come back to Fort Bragg. Well, I got half my wish because I got to come back to Fort Bragg, and of course Brenda and I had a home there that we'd been renting out. So we came back to Fort Bragg, and uh, uh, that's where I stayed until I retired. At the la during the last couple of years at Fort Bragg, I was also working at an emergency room in Dunn, North Carolina. And uh, I honestly believe that I was the first PA that was ever licensed to work in Harnett County uh, because the, the school that I went to, I went to, it was class number one of the 
military PA school. So I stayed there until I retired and then for an additional couple of years I stayed on working in the emergency room and uh, that emergency room decided to contract out to what's called coastal emergency physicians and at that time they did not use PAs. So when I started looking for a job, of course I'm praying for God please help me get a job close so I don't have to sell the farm and move the kids and everything. That didn't work out, but it's been a blessing because I couldn't find a jo another job there, but that allowed me to, to move to this area and I got a job with the uh, rural health care group and worked most of my time at uh, the Twin County Clinic in Hollister. And that's where I stayed until I retired. And I've been retired since 01, 2001. Have a wonderful home, a wonderful church, had wonderful job work until I retired, and uh, life's been good. And, and I, right now, they have decided that I have 80% disability because of my exposure to Agent Orange. Obviously, the heel I've described to you, the only way you could survive there was to clear the areas around it. And there's only one way to clear it, and that was Agent Orange. So a lot of people badmouth the Agent Orange. And I have 80% disability because of it, but in my opinion, I'm alive because of it too. If they could have come right up to the edge of our post, there, there's just no way we could have held them off. There were too many of them.